<laughs> so this is the Colbert Report. For those of you who are living in a cave, Stephen Colbert hosts a show where he's a conservative and he tries to self-promote, just like Papa Bear Bill O'Reilly. And this is intended to really parody things, but sometimes people th take his show a little bit too seriously. And he actually self-promotes by saying that he gives people the Colbert bump. For example, John Hall, who you might know from the hit singles by Orleans in the scandally clad album, um, he ran for Congress. And whenever he ran for Congress, he won the Colbert Report, and he won. And Colbert claimed it was because of him. When Mike Huckabee came on the show, he t said he was polling at 1% before he came on the show. After the show, he started polling at 3%. He tripled his popularity. <laughs> and at that rate, he was going to reach 88 million percent by the time the election came. <laughs> Toby Keith came on the show. His country album went to number one in the next week. Salman Rushdie came on the show. The next week, he became Sir Salman Rushdie. He was, <laughs> he was knighted by the Queen of England. And so this is all clearly evidence that Stephen Colbert has an effect. Anyone come, who comes on is going to receive the Colbert bump, but he tried to give it to himself. He ran for president in South Carolina, or he wanted to. He even got corporate sponsorship from Doritos. But this woman kept him from running. This is Carol Fowler, no relation to me. But she did thank him for sucking up and for all the Doritos. Now, he has a lot of people who come on the show in this segment called Better Know a District. For example, this guy came on the show. He wants to put the Ten Commandments in government halls. And as it turns out, he could only name three of the commandments on the show. <laughs> this guy, he actually was asked to uh, answer the following sentences. Cocaine is fun because, yeah. and prostitutes are fun because, <laughs> it's just because they're a good thing to do. <laughs> she was not too happy with him. These two started feuding because she said candidates cannot go on the show. And she didn't realize that there might be some value from them actually putting them in this, in this circumstance and, and being lambasted. But as a result, fewer and fewer people went on this Better Know a District show. Now, the fans of the show, they actually said that this is actually a really good thing because the people who go on the show, they win on average 34% more of the vote than the people who don't go on the show. But clearly, that's kind of dumb reasoning because 89% of them are incumbents, like this guy here. <laughs> And so I was in Las Vegas one night with my friends Chris Dawes and David Cesarini. There's a picture of us. I forget the name of the monkey. <laughs> and I was thinking to myself, is the Colbert bump real? So I, I couldn't sleep. It was 2 in the morning. And so what do you do whenever you're bored and you're thinking of a social science problem? <laughs> you whip out your, your computer. You go to the FEC website. You download some data. You go to Wikipedia, which is a very good source. And you get all the candidates who have ever appeared on the Colbert Report. And you obviously, you fire up R. And when I did that, what I did is I created a hall of heroes, people who had been on the show, and a hall of cowards, people who had not been on the show who were matched to people in the hall of heroes. And the way I did the matching was what I did is, is I took the donation history for each of them on the day that they appeared in the show, and I randomly matched them to people based on their party, based on whether or not they're incumbents, based on the number of, of uh, donations, and also based on the amount of the donations. So we have sort of like a treatment group and a control group. So then I could compare what happens before you go on Colbert and what happens after. This is for the Democrats. Before the show, the Democrats are in trouble. In fact, they earn significantly less than people who don't go on the show. And so we don't know if this is a selection fact where, where Colbert's looking for people like this, or if they're thinking, I've got to take a risk. I've got to go do something crazy to try to jumpstart my campaign. Well, as it turns out, the people who do that, they actually earn significantly more in the month after. They earn 44% more in donations, the treatment group compared to the control group. Um, and these circle dot, open circle dots, those are places where, where the differences are significant. Now, for Republicans, it's actually not such a good story. <laughs> Not only is there no Colbert bump, but usually the only people who are willing to go on the show are people who are already doing really well in their campaigns. They're doing significantly better than people who haven't gone on the show. Now, an alternative possibility is that the Colbert bump actually is real for Republicans, but it's actually been moved backward in time by Tech Jansen. <laughs> Unfortunately, we don't have any way of uh, you know, trying to figure out whether or not that's a causal mechanism. Now, ideally, you want to know if the money actually matters. And in this case, the heroes actually earn 67.7% of the vote compared to the cowards. So about 3% more. But because there's so few people that were actually running in that election, the p-value on this is only 0.22. So we don't know if this is actually real. So this research was published in the best journal published by the American Political Science Association, <laughs> PS. Also, the world's best newspaper, the Los Angeles Times. 
and um, Stephen actually referred to the report on his show, um, which was very, made me very happy. What made me happier was it getting a chance to go on the show to talk about social networks. And what I did is I looked at actually my sales rank for the book Connected, and you'll see that I also got the Colbert bump. <laughs> 